Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you like working on stuff and you're cheap like me, sometimes you end up with stuff that doesn't work with other stuff, but you're cheap so you gotta make it work anyhow. An example, if you have a Husqvarna 445 chainsaw you know that it's a 325 pitch 50 thousandths gauge saw it's got a narrow end on the bar mount and it's kind of a pain to find a long bar for it. Anyhow, I, I, I bought a $30 wild thing online and it came with <clears throat> this 20 inch Oregon bar. There's the numbers for it. It's a 325 50 gauge 20 inch takes an H78 Oregon chain fits the saw nicely you got to remove the stock tensioner because the bar has its own tensioner right there nice thing about that is is you don't have to lift up on the end of the bar when you tighten your chain you just turn that lock her down go to work. Anyhow, this particular 20 inch bar doesn't have an oiler hole for this saw here, but I can show you what I did to fix the problem. Alright, <clears throat> I got my camera in selfie mode so if I'm looking in weird places that's why and if it takes me a bit to get what I'm looking at in frame that's why. All right, so this particular organ bar, uh, 20H78041, takes 20 inch loop, H78 organ chain or 78 links of your favorite 325 chain. However, it didn't come drilled with an oiler hole to match up with the oiler on this this particular saw so what you have to do is you have to file a groove in the tension hole and I just got started on this project and then when you have your tension hole made then you have to make a plug you have to make a plug so there's the groove so it meets up with the oil pump flange gasket the rubber gasket and then there you can see I just plugged the back side with some silicone whether or not this will actually work I don't know yet because I'm just trying it out today but Putting a little diagonal groove there until it allows the oil to flow will work. Now, you can plug the hole completely and drill, drill on the side here. Wherever the stock, wherever the hole needs to be, just drill a little hole, maybe eighth inch or so. Just whatever the size your, your your original bar came with you can drill it up here to match but you still have to plug this because as the chain wears this does expose the oiler but since I have a brand new chain on it doesn't quite get there so that's why I chose to do it this way 
So I have a nice little curve there to get oil to the chain. And then there'll be a plug on the opposite side there. If you can give me a moment, I'll pull the bar off and see if the silicone's going to do the job. And then I didn't plug it up on the other side. Let me see if I can change my camera orientation for you. All right. So, if you look right down in there, you get it on there and give you a little bit of light. Focus right there. That's the new oiler hole. And it will move along lines it'll move along here as the chain wears as the chain wears it's going to come up down this way you can see where this dirt is that's kind of where that hole is now so i put the groove in it so it'll follow along here however if you don't put the plug in with the silicone right there Then it'll just come out the other side, make a big old mess, make a big old mess, and not get any oil on your chain. So if you look down again, there's the groove, it's open, and then the silicone is going to plug it up to keep the oil from getting off the chain. Now you'll likely have to replace that silicone every now and again if you choose to make the repair that way however if you drill it you can and you got a tig welder or something you can tig weld that up you can put a wooden dowel in that hole you can put any number of different things into that hole jb weld maybe i'll do jb weld in the future but for now i'm just going to use the high temp oil resistant silicone to plug it up because if i don't the oil will just escape right there because that hole is not covered by this cover. It would escape right here and you wouldn't get any oil on your stuff. So this isn't, this is likely not the right way to do it, but it will probably work. And if it doesn't, I'm out 10 bucks for that bar. That's how much the bar cost. It does have a burr on one side. It's never been flipped. But I got files to dress it up and it'll be just fine. Anyhow, don't be afraid to modify your bars just a little bit if they're close. There's different ways to make things work. As long as you're respectful of your tool and you don't use it in a disrespectful manner, it will still be a safe tool to use. Peace. And yes, if, if, if I prepared well enough, there will be a milling video with this saw and this particular chain. I do have another chain that I've milled with before that cuts like crazy. It's not an Oregon, it's not a steel, it's not a Husky chain. I don't recall the brand. I'll have to look it up. But 
if this chain turns out to not be as nice as that particular chain, then I will save this for felling and I'll buy another 20 inch loop of that other brand because that other brand straight out of the box cuts through walnut locust like butter it's crazy but <clears throat> um, yeah if I get out there cutting with this thing and I recall I'll shoot a video of milling with the Husqvarna 445 you can forget it in a snowbank and it'll still start in two poles y'all yeah. alright